hi everyone welcome back to my channel through this video we are going to analyze the play the way of the world by the famous playwright william congreve so i'm planning to give a brief note on william congreve first then we can look at the summary of the play and lastly we can conclude the topic by analyzing the way of the world as a reflection of social life of restoration age in england this play seems to be a little bit complicated due to its plots and subplots so through this video i'm trying to make everything clear to you all before going to the summary we can have a look at the playwright william congreve william congreve is an english playwright and poet of the restoration period he was known for his clever satirical dialogue and influence on the comedy of manners style of that period He was also a minor political figure in the British Whig party. His major plays were The Old Bachelor in 1693, The Double Dealer in 1693, Love for Love in 1695 and The Way of the World in 1700. Next, let's see who all are the characters in this play The Way of the World. There are many characters in this play and their relationship with each other will be creating confusions to you all. In order to avoid that we can draw a diagram like the family tree and examine who all are them in detail. Let's start from Lady Wishfort. She is the aged character in this play. Arabella is Lady Wishfort's daughter and after marrying Mr Fainall she converted or her name was converted as Mrs Fainall and throughout this play Arabella is mentioned as Mrs Fainall. Before marrying to Mr Fainall she was already married to a man called Languish but due to his death they were not able to lead a married life for a long time so Languish is not a character in this play and his name is just mentioned as the ex-husband of Arabella or Mrs Fainall the central character in this play is Mirabel Mirabel is Mr Fainall's or Arabella's ex-lover Till now we look at the relationship that came from Lady Wishfort as Arabella as her daughter Languish as Arabella's ex-husband Fainall as her present husband and Mirabel as her ex-lover Mirabel is the hero in this play so if there is a hero there should be a heroine or there must be a heroine right Here in this play too we have a heroine and she was also connected with Lady Wishfort she was the niece of lady wishfort and her name was milament this milament and the hero mirabel were lovers the names of this hero and heroine is also creating some kind of confusions both their names start with the letters m i means me so be clear that milament is a girl or a woman and mirabel is a man These are the central characters in this play and we have many minor characters too like the servant friend and all so we can go through their names too First one is Mrs Marwood Mrs Marwood is Lady Wishfort's friend when the play starts she's just a friend of Lady Wishfort and as the play progress the character Mrs Marwood is changing I don't want to disclose the turning point or shift here and we can see it in the summary. The next character is Waitwell. Waitwell is Mirabel's servant. So servants too have a great role in this play that they too share a certain kind of important role as the hero or a hero in this play and we can see what it is. Next one is Foible. Foible is Lady Wishfort's servant. Then Sir Wilful he is lady wishfort's nephew and lastly not lastly there are some servants too but i think i want to mention one more name it's sir rowland and his name was just mentioned in this play as mirabel's uncle there is one more character called mincing and it's milliman's maid that's all about the characters i think it's clear for you about the relationship of each characters as the play progresses all these things will be shifting changing and all let's see what happens so before the play begins a number of important events have taken place in the lives of the main characters as i mentioned earlier which congreve the writer reveals throughout the play arabella's first husband languish has died and left her his fortune i think you remembered who is arabella arabella is lady wishfort's daughter After the death of Languish she begins a secret affair with Edmund Mirabel Edmund Mirabel is the hero in this play 
Later, they end the affair and she gets married to a man Mirabel has selected. That man is Mr. Fainal because Mirabel is afraid that they will conceive a child out of the wedlock. Mirabel and Mrs. Arabella Fainal remain as good friends after the affair ends or after her marriage. Then, Mirabel begins courting with Mrs. Fainal's cousin that is Melamant who lives with Mrs. Fainal's mother that is Lady Wishford. So, Lady Wishford is Melamant's aunt and they were living in a house together. To gain Lady Wishford's favour for his marriage to Melamant, Mirabel flatters Wishford and lavishes much attention on her. Because all the property or fortune of Melamant was under the control of Lady Wishford. But what happens is that Lady Wishford becomes convinced that he loves her, that Mirabel loves Lady Wishford and she too falls for him. However, after Lady Wishford's best friend Mrs. Marwood reveals that Mirabel was in love with Millamant, Lady Wishford's feelings for Mirabel change from love to anger or hate. Now, she will not grant her permission for Mirabel to marry Millamant. And an important problem is that, as I mentioned earlier, Lady Wishford controls Melamant's 6,000 pounds of dowry. The night before the first scene of the play, the first time Mirabel has gone back to Lady Wishford's house, since she found out his plan, Lady Wishford unceremoniously dismisses Mirabel from her cabal nightclub in front of Melamant, who doesn't stand up for him and a number of other people. Undiscouraged, Mirabel has already began hatching a plan to make Lady Wishford to accept the marriage and Millamant comes to know about this plan through Fawbel, the servant. While all these things are going on, Fainal has been having an affair with his wives and Lady Wishford's friend that is Mrs. Marwood. This is what I said in the introductory part that the character or the role of Mrs. Marwood is shifted from the friend of Lady Wishford to the lover of Mr. Fainer. And Mirabel is the only one who suspects that this is going on, means this affair is going on. Both the servants, Foible and Mincing. Foible is Lady Wishford's servant and Mincing is Milliman's servant. They have witnessed the affair but have been sworn to secrecy by Mrs. Marwood. The play begins in the morning and Mirabel is waiting forward that his servant Waitwell and Lady Wishford's servant Foible have gotten married according to his plan. So his plan was that he arranged marriage between Lady Wishford's servant and his own servant. Here I am not describing things happening according to the scenes or acts. I am just giving a brief summary on this play. Meanwhile, Mirabel is playing cards with his enemy that is Fainal. Mirabel hints that he knows that Fainal and Mrs. Marwood are having an affair. So Mirabel is giving some hints to uh, Mr. Fainal. But he also reveals to Fainal his love for both Milliman's strength and weaknesses of characters. Hearing all these things, Fainal encourages Mirabel to marry her. As we discussed earlier, now Lady Wishford is in angry with Mirabel because he cheated her. Actually, Mirabel wanted to marry Millamant and in order to take the concern from Lady Wishford, he acted like that. But unfortunately, Lady Wishford fallen in love with him and it creates a lot of problems in this relationship. So, Foible, the servant, encouraged Lady Wishford to marry Sir Rowland. Sir Rowland is Mirabel's uncle and he is not married. So when Lady Wishford marry his uncle, means Sir Rowland, um, Mirabel will lose his inheritance. That was the plan made by Lady Wishford. In this play, the actual character Sir Rowland is not presented. Waitwell enacted the role of Sir Rowland in front of Lady Wishford and all the others. Their plan is to entangle Lady Wishford in a marriage which cannot go ahead because it would be bigamy. The reason for this is that Waitwell is a servant and Lady Wishford aristocrat or a person belonged to the elite family. Waitwell did all those things according to the plan of Mirabel. Mirabel will offer to help her out of this situation if she consents to his marriage with Millamant. This is the agreement that he wanted to make with Lady Wishford. Later, Mrs. Fainal, that is Arabella, discusses this plan with Foible the servant and this is overheaded by Mrs. Marwood who continues an extramarital 
affair with Mr. Fainal and Mrs. Marwood later tells this plan to Fainal who decided that he will take his wife's money and go away with Mrs. Marwood. So Mr. Fainal anyway wanted to live with Mrs. Marwood and he also want Arabella's fortune for that. Later, there is a scene in which Mirabel and Millamant discuss in detail the condition under which they would accept each other's marriage proposal and all. And Mirabel finally proposes her and with the help of Mrs. Fainal, Millamant also accepted his proposal. At the same time, Lady Wishford wants Millamant to marry her nephew, that is Sir Wilful Bitwood, who had just arrived from the courtyard. Lady Wishfort later gets a letter telling her about Sir Roland. Sir Roland takes the letter and accuses Mirabel of trying to sabotage their wedding. Lady Wishfort agrees to let Sir Rowland bring a marriage contract that night. By Act 5, Lady Wishfort has found out everything and Fainal wanted Waitwell to be arrested. Because Waitwell cheated everyone by enacting the role of Sir Roland. And the actual character Sir Roland was not aware of all these things happening there. That's why Lady Wishfort wanted Waitwell to be arrested because of this act that he did for Mirabel. At this time, Mrs. Fainal tells Foible that her previous affair with Mirabel is now a public knowledge that both his mother, husband and all the public come to know about this previous affair now. Even though both of them didn't continue that affair now, they were a little bit confused what will happen when the public come to know about this. And Lady Wishfort thanked Mrs. Marwood for revealing the truth about Waitwell, that he is not Mr. Sir Rowland. But still also, Lady Wishfort was not aware that Mrs. Marwood, who is her best friend, is continuing an extramarital affair with her own daughter's husband. Then appears Mr. Fainal and he uses the information of Mrs. Fainal's previous affair with Mirabel and Milliman's contract to marry him to blackmail Lady Wishfort by telling that she would never marry and she has to transfer her fortune to him, not to her daughter or her niece that is Milliman. Because Mr. Fainal clearly knows that it is Lady Wishfort who carry the inheritance of Milliman too. In order to escape from the trap made by Mr. Fainal, Lady Wishford offers Mirabel her concern to the marriage if he can save her fortune and honour. Mirabel calls Baitwell and he brings a contract from the time before the marriage of Fainal's in which Mrs. Fainal gives all her property to Mirabel. So the blackmail became in vain and Mirabel restores Mrs. Fainal's property to her position and then free to marry Millamant with the full of 12,000 pounds of inheritance means 6,000 is the share of Millamant and the later 6,000 is the share it was given by Lady Wishfort. The play end like this and I think that there are more portions that we have to discuss on this particular play as I said it is a restoration drama it is important to know about the restoration age and the features of restoration drama which we can see in this particular play and the settings of each acts or scenes were also important i didn't mention all those things in the summary and we can go through all those features first of all i want to talk about the restoration age we know that the period from 1660 to 1700 is known as the Restoration Period or the Age of Dryden. The restoration of King Charles II in 1660 marks the beginning of a new era both in the life and the literature of England. The king was received with wild joy on his return from exile. The change of government from commonwealth to kingship corresponded to a change in the mood of the nation. As I said earlier, restoration brought about a revolutionary change in the life and literature. During this period, gravity, moral earnestness and decorum in all things which distinguished the Puritan period were thrown to the winds. The natural instincts which were suppressed during the previous era came to violent access during this period. In the greater part of restoration period, there was awareness of the limitations of human experience without faith in the extension of the resources. 
there was the disposition to accept its limitations to exploit the potentialities of a strictly human world the historical events like restoration of charles ii in 1660s the religious controversy and the revolution of 1688 deeply influenced the social life and literary movements of the age the king charles ii had a number of mistresses and numerous children he was surrounded by corrupt and degenerate ministers all these kinds of corruptions and controversies can also be in the life of the people and literature which was produced at that time profligacy was glorified in the royal court and corruption was rampant in all walks of life beginning of the restoration began the process of social transformation the atmosphere of gaiety and cheerfulness of licentiousness moral laxity was restored theaters were reopened there was a stern reaction against the morality of the puritans there were laxity everywhere in life all these tendencies of the age are clearly reflected in the literature of the period there was a rapid development of science and establishment of royal society was a landmark in the history of england the french influence was predominant during this period because the king had spent the period of the exile in france french manners and fashion spread from the court to the aristocracy it also influenced contemporary literature next we are going to analyze how this restoration age or restoration england is portrayed in this particular play the way of the world as i mentioned earlier the way of the world is an exquisite portrayal of the contemporary society of the restoration period it gives us a better knowledge of the manners the mentality and the outlook of the aristocratic men and women of the restoration society their fashionable way of life their witty way of expression their dealing with love marriage and adulterous relationships etc overall the play is a perfect portrayal of the people and society of congreve's age restoration is a period of loose morals and the play gives us an adequate idea of the prevailing morality The play has a number of characters who all are belonging to the polished upper class society. Most of the characters in the play have very weak sense of morality. They have no other business but motivating action relating always to illicit love affairs, marriage, courtships etc. When we discussed the summary I told you that Mirabel and Millamant are in love with each other but we see that this hero Mirabel previously had a relationship with Mrs Fainall and mrs fainall though married still seems to admire her ex lover her husband also maintains such an illicit love affair with mrs marwood this is the correct example for the looseness of morality because here we can see that there is no loyalty between husband or wife or lovers they were not maintaining a good relationship and they were still flirting or continuing an extra affair with a woman or someone else The showy relationship of men and women of the restoration society is presented excellently through the couple of Mr and Mrs Fainall. Another instance of this is a case of Lady Wishfort. We can say that Lady Wishfort is 55 but even at this age she fancies herself to get married. At the same time almost all the men and women of this society are involved in intrigues to fulfill their worldly desires. they want to fulfill their desires and ambition at any cost there are tremendous example for this desire or ambition to get money or to own property in this play itself first of all we can see that mr fainall marry lady wishfort's daughter to get money and mrs fainall on the other hand takes adequate precautions with the help of mirabel against any possible betrayal by her husband Mirabel also pretends to love Lady Wishfort but actually loves her niece ultimately she is deceived and disappointed another feature is that the play is full of many sexual and vulgar joke scenes the act 1 begins in the chocolate house where many people comes to enjoy similarly act 2 begins in St James Park the park suggests something as freedom this is a public place where basically fashionable people used to go to exchange their heart and to be free act 3 to begin in lady wishfort's house but the very scene is in the toilet remaining inside the toilet lady wishfort is talking to peg her servant in serious matters it clearly shows that how restoration people take the serious things slightly in act 4 lady wishfort and foible are talking the arrival of sir roland 
Lady Wishpot orders to Fibel to arrange the things in order and she also asks for dancers and musicians if Sir Roland wants to entertain. It is the showy nature of the restoration period because people like Lady Wishpot is very much concerned on how to perceive and impress man in his first visit. As a result, she talks how to sit, how to walk, how to talk in front of him. She says, I quote it, I will walk from the door upon his entrance and how do I look? Unquote it. Lady Wishfort uses heavy cosmetics to hide her faded beauty and wrinkles. These events clearly shows that how the restoration people are very pedantic in their fashion and outer appearance. In the same way, in another scene, Milliman talks with her lover, Mirabel, that she does not like to be familiar or found. She rejects to go to any park not she plays together, even after the marriage, and she wants to be like unmarried woman. Likewise, she wants liberty to write letters, to receive letters, to talk with the lover, to have dinner with him, and to bring him in her dressing room. Even her husband must knock the door before entering the room if her lover is inside the room. These are the general conditions she talks with Mirabel before getting married. This is what actually the restoration period was. Next point is this. In the play, male characters are pursuing women. We can take the instances of Mirabel, Whitwood, Petulant and Fainal who seems adulterous and deceptive. It was because they are fashionable to court a young and beautiful woman in the contemporary society. In the play, everyone plots against everyone and deceives everyone. Mr. Fainal, the fortune hunter, is almost committed to get Milliman's fortune at hand. We find the characters in disguise and they do their best to be what they are not. To pretend to be what one is the way of the world. So the title itself suggests the manners of restoration urban aristocrats. Women of this age held a free spirit and the institution of marriage did not play a serious role in those times. Married women often had illicit relationship with wealthy men. Position of fortune played a crucial part in the existence of love relations and age was a factor least cared about in the restoration age. The amorous widows or other old characters were also found in desperate need of love where again fortune played its part. The aged are ready to give away their wealth to have the love of the younger opposite sex. Mrs. Fainal and Mrs. Marwood are characters representation of restoration women indulged in illicit relationships. Contrary paves a way for a modern day independent woman to his female lead character, Millament. She is distinguished from other restoration heroines by her dazzling wit and serious independent attitude. Lastly, Fibel is the typical restoration character whose loyalty is only to herself. The female characters take pleasure in gossiping private and secret lives of others and equally take part in verbal confrontation irrespective of their sex. They have their own identity and individuality in the society of the restoration age. In restoration society, servants had a very decisive and important place. Because the upper class people were too much dependent on their servants as they could not do anything themselves. In the play, there were three servants, Foibel, Mincing and Maitwell. Foibel is Lady Wishford's resourceful, energetic servant allied with Mirabel. Maitwell is Mirabel's servant who is married to Foibel and Mirabel used him in his plot against Lady Wishford. And lastly, Mincing. Mincing is Milliman's maid. These people were not just as servants. They acted as a friend, helper and even guide to their masters. There was a moneyed class with leisure in the restoration period. Pursuit of sexual pleasure and money was not just like an institution for providing stability to social life. Love and marriage are guided by a desire for maternal gain. As we see the plot unfold, the characters reveal themselves to their pursuit and behavior. The way they behave makes laughter inevitable. Through this, Conkrey is satirizing the behavior of the people of the English society. The play is written in prose to depict the age of commerce and money. The play does not end with everyone happy, but Mirabel and Millamant possesses the advantage and look forward to marriage. Millamant's bargain with Mirabel is an important feature of the fashionable society. It shows the true picture of the morality of the age. She thinks that her liberty would be crushed by marriage. 
Thus, before marriage, she wants Mirabel to agree that she would be free to do anything even after marriage. So, we are trying to analyze the features of restoration age or restoration drama in this play. We saw many such features like the money-oriented society or the society which is giving more important to the fashion, wealth or adultery. No one is having any kind of attachment or sincerity towards anyone and there is no that kind of a bond between the characters. Concrete presents a world where moral values and principles are exchanged for prestige and wealth. In addition, the deceit that is practiced by all the characters make this play incredibly comic. In this play, the words that the characters speak and the way that they act to each other are almost a reflection of what they really believe. Consider Fainal as an example. If we look at his appearances alone, we would imagine him to be incredibly happy in his marriage. Reality, however, shows us that he scorns his wife and is having an adulterous relationship with the best friend of his wife. This conflict between appearance and reality exposes the way in which Congreve is satirizing his own society and how this society was based on the importance of maintaining an outer veneer of wit and sophistication, no matter how questionable the reality was underneath that veneer. Congreve indeed uses this play to hold a mirror upon his own society and thus the way of the world presents a true picture of the restoration age. It reflects the social life of the day. Here, the upper class manner is central target of Congreve's attack. That's all about this particular play, The Way of the World. So in this video, we discussed about the great playwright William Congreve and we go through a short summary of this play, The Way of the World. I also sum up some of the features of the restoration age and how these features were reflected in this particular play. Hope that this video will really help all the students to understand this play in a better manner. If you have any doubts regarding this play, you can post those worries and doubts as comments. I'll be giving replies to all those doubts. Mm -hmm.